What is going on, my Pro Guides fam? My name's Cody, and if you're a beginner or planning to swap to keyboard and mouse, this video will be perfect for you. We compiled seven of our best tips to help turn you into a keyboard and mouse legend. Let's get into it, y'all. We'll be looking at fast ways to improve your mechanics, some really new useful creative maps, as well as critical settings you need to know. And at the end of the video, we'll look at something that many new keyboard and mouse gamers often overlook, so don't go anywhere. A sub and like on the video would be appreciated. Let's get into it. All right, so tip number one is to train your aim a lot. And this is really important, so we're gonna spend a while talking about it. Mastering mouse movement and click timing takes ages. I'm talking months. So when you're starting out, train your aim every day for 10 minutes minimum. But we would recommend between 30 minutes to an hour. An hour of aim training can get boring. Yeah, but trust us, it is worth it. And you can always throw on some music or a podcast to keep yourself entertained. As for how you should aim train, if you're on a PC, you should definitely be taking advantage of aim training games like Kovacs or AimLab. Kovacs may cost 10 bucks, but it provides a very comprehensive aim training experience. And there are plenty of routines you can follow. For example, Aimer7 is an aim coach, and his Kovacs routines are incredibly detailed. We'll leave a link in the description. But basically, you want to start at the beginner routine and work your way up over a few months for a complete aim training experience. And when you do train, make sure to alternate which style of aim you practice. So do 10 minutes of tracking, 10 minutes of flicks, then go back to tracking, back to flicks, and so on. Some research shows that alternating like this helps you retain muscle memory, so for long-term improvement, this is the best. And guys, if you want to be the best of the best, then head over to ProGuides.com, where we got tons of online coaching and classing that will help you step up your Fortnite game to the next level. The next level, bro. Check it out, man. If you don't have a PC or just want to train in Fortnite, we recommend Raiders Practice Hub. In it, you can find a portal to Scavox Aim Trainer. We've talked a bunch about this map already. It's a staple, it's insanely good, and it's as close to a real aim trainer as you can get in Fortnite. But in Raiders Hub, there's also a portal to his aim duels. Practicing your aim against real players can feel tense, but it is excellent practice. And eventually, you need to learn how to combine movement with shooting. For example, if you're strafing left, your crosshair will move left too, just ever so slightly. So you need to compensate by moving your mouse a little to the right. And for someone new to keyboard and mouse, these small adjustments don't come naturally. It takes time getting used to, and this map is perfect for that. But if you want to keep your aim on point, just know the aim training never stops with keyboard and mouse. So use these resources, come up with a regular routine that focuses on areas you struggle in, and don't skip out. Grind, grind, grind! And once you're done grinding, grind some more! But do not forget to take, you know, at least 30 minutes of your day, get outside, get some sun, ooh, soak up that vitamin D, it's good for your skin. And guys, if you are serious about getting good quickly, you should definitely check out our pro video reviews. You submit your VOD, our pro coaches review it, and then you'll get a detailed analysis in under 24 hours. They'll point out where you're messing up, what you should work on, and so on. Perfect if you just made the swap. Check it out by clicking up top or visiting the description link. All right, training your aim is essential, but what's that other thing? Oh yeah, building. To get good quick, you need to grind your builds in creative just as much as you train your aim. First, with free building. Free building is so important in so many ways, not only because it's how you get more in tune with your build binds, but also your timing. Button timing is crucial in a lot of building techniques. And when you're starting out on keyboard, getting the button timing down is challenging, especially with things like triple or quad edits. In that case, just start off slow, build whatever you can. With some, learning to build with a keyboard is a very slow process. Like, no joke, it can take you up to two or three months of daily grinding to get comfortable with building. Some people are faster, some are slower. But that's why you shouldn't feel bad starting off slow. Do what techniques you can, and again, practice every day. Not just free building, but other courses as well. Like for instance, edit courses. 
which you can find in Raiders Practice Hub. For tip number three, you need to gain fighting experience. It's one thing to practice your aim and building in a closed environment, but once you add enemy players and other things your brain needs to pay attention to, that's when all that practice seems to go out the window. The good news is that there are some great maps to practice fighting. For one, FaZe Martaz just released his updated Turtle Wars with matchmaking. Just make sure that when you're joining creative from the lobby, you select Island Code instead of Create. Put the code in and that takes you straight to the match with no problems. Other than Turtle Wars, we recommend Zone Wars and one-on-one -on -one build battles. Now you can pretty much always find these in the practice section of Creative, but Zone Wars are also really good at providing a mixture of practice, so aiming and building, and building techniques you're more likely to use in real games. 1v1s, on the other hand, are going to help you learn how to build while keeping track of enemies, looking for damage opportunities, and reacting based on how your enemy builds. Definitely one of the better ways to improve quickly. For tip number four, you need to remember to stay in the right mindset. Obviously, learning keyboard and mouse is no walk in the park. Like we said, it can take months to feel comfortable. And during that time, it can feel grueling to the point where you might want to quit. But remember, you're still learning. It's normal to play worse when learning a new input. So you shouldn't ever dwell on any losses. Keep positive and use them as learning experiences. That way, in the long run, you'll probably end up becoming a much better player. Guys, you've heard of that phrase, use your losses as learning experiences. Well, yes, that mentality is crucial. If you're the type to dismiss every situation as not being your fault, newsflash, bro, on keyboard and mouse, mechanical mistakes are nearly always your fault. And you need to realize that so you can actually care about fixing them either with more mechanical training or by changing your playstyle to something that benefits keyboard and mouse more. That might mean taking less 50-50s, implementing more edits and resets when you fight, and maybe even adding more piece control into your repertoire. So if you feel like quitting, remind yourself the struggle is only in the short term. You'll eventually improve and get so much better. Stay optimistic. Remember to learn from your mistakes and you'll improve much quicker. For tip number five, we need to talk about what's important when it comes to picking the right settings. First off, keybinds. You might have heard of the optimal keybinds, where you set your binds up so that your fingers never come off of your movement keys. Optimal binds aren't bad, but just know they're kind of overrated. Pro players like Booga or Klix, actually most of them, don't even use optimal binds. Because truthfully, as long as you don't have trouble hitting specific keys, then they work. It is all down to preference, and any combination of keys like X, C, V, Q, E, F, R, Shift, and your side mouse buttons are all good, no matter if you have an optimized keybind setup or not. Just don't go too far off the defaults. Don't go with anything crazy, and use what feels comfortable. In terms of must-haves though, you need to set up scroll wheel reset. To do that, you set your secondary binds for building edit and reset building edit to the same scroll wheel direction. And if you can manage to play with your middle finger always on the scroll wheel, that's gonna make your resets super quick. Not everyone holds a mouse like that, but if you find it comfortable, definitely give it a shot. Also, it is a solid idea to rebind your edit key to something closer to WASD, like E, F, or even R. The default of G is just sort of tough to hit if you're not used to it. If you are, then that's great. You can stick with it. But if you're just starting, definitely change your edit key since that one's going to be used a ton. Now what about sensitivity? Well, it is all preference yet again. Higher low can work, but we recommend going either low or in the middle. Something like 800 DPI on your mouse and between 5-10% to in game. Then for your scoped and aiming sensitivity, bring that down to between 20 and 50%. Why? Because lower sensitivities allow you to be more precise with your aim. And while your building speed slows down, you can always compensate with faster arm movements. That's what's amazing about keyboard and mouse. Even on low sense, you can flick really fast and still box up in an instant. Of course, to play with low sense, you're going to need the right mouse pad. Not one of those dinky small ones, but an XL sized one. 
These mouse pads are definitely worth investing in if you want space and freedom to make more mouse movements. At the end of the day though, sensitivity is all preference. So if you want to go high, then go high. It can work. But based on your experiences and how sensitivity is treated in other competitive games, lower sense makes your aim way more precise. And we think you should start there. Okay, for tip number six, don't cheap out when buying a mouse. Every mouse has a sensor on the bottom that tracks your movements as you slide it around. But some sensors straight up suck and can't track fast movements. So with some mice, like a lot of the really cheap ones on Amazon, you won't even be able to go for flick shots without your crosshair completely bugging out, even though they call it a gaming mouse. If you experience this with your mouse right now, we definitely suggest looking for a new one. And you don't have to break the bank either. A lot of mice manufacturers offer reasonable deals on mice with flawless sensors that regularly go on sale for 20 or 30 bucks like the Logitech G203, the Razer Viper Mini, or the Razer Death Adder. I know many of us want to save money, but the truth is, mice with bad sensors will only hold you back. We know this advice might be too late if you already bought a mouse, but a lot of you might be new and we just don't want you to encounter the pitfall that is bad gaming mice. If the sensor sucks, they're just not worth buying. But anyway, there is a site called sensor.fyi slash mice, which lists mice you can trust to accurately track your movements. Pick a mouse from that list, or just make sure to look up what sensor is in the mouse that you are buying, so you don't just end up getting swindled. Lastly, for tip number seven, it is a good idea to wash your mouse pad every six months or so. As you use your mouse pad, there's gonna be a bunch of oil and sweat that goes from your arm and wrist onto the surface. That's totally normal, but eventually that grime will cake onto your mouse pad. Ugh. This will negatively interfere with your aim, not just by messing up the sensor, but also making your mouse pad surface inconsistent and less smooth. And that can have huge downsides when you need precise tracking for things like edits or long distance shots. That's why you should just wash your mouse pad. Soak it under the kitchen sink or bathtub, get a sponge or some type of scrubbing tool, and just lather in soap or some nice smelling body wash until it's eventually clean. Then you just pat it down and let it dry for a few hours. And FYI, this is only for regular cloth mouse pads. If yours has any electronics like RGB lighting or wireless charging, don't be foolish and submerge it in water. There are a bunch of videos on YouTube that can go over in detail how to wash your mouse pad already. So we won't waste any more of your time. This was more of a reminder. So check those out when you feel your mouse pad needs a clean. And if you have a happy mouse pad, then you will be a happy gamer. Okay, everyone, hope our tips for new keyboard and mouse players helped you out. If it did, don't forget to like the video and subscribe with the bell on for more future Pro Guides videos. If you have any of your own tips for keyboard and mouse players, share it in the comments down below. And remember, you can find all links and map codes in the description. Once again, though, I'm your host, Cody. Hope you have a wonderful day. I'll see you on the battlefield. <laughs>